this uh, stochastic process uh, in this we are going to discuss discrete time Markov chain and this is a lecture 1. In this lecture I am going to discuss the introduction about the discrete time Markov chain then followed by the definition and the important one concept called the one step transition probability matrix and uh, few simple examples also. Consider a random experiment of uh, tossing a coin infinitely many times. Each trial there are two possible outcomes namely head or tail. Assume that the probability of head that probability you assume that that is p and uh, the probability of tail occurring in each trial that you assume it as 1 minus p. You assume that the p is lies between 0 to 1. Denote for the nth trial because you are tossing a coin infinitely many times for the nth trial you denote the random variable x n is the random variable whose values are 0 or 1 with the probability the probability of x n takes the value 0 that is same as in the nth trial you are getting the tail that probability is 1 minus p and the probability of x n takes the value 1 that probability is make it as p for the head of s and uh, already you assume that uh, the probability lies between 0 to 1. Thus, you have a sequence of random variable x 1, uh, x 2 and so on and uh, this will form a stochastic process and assume that all the x i's are all the x i's are mutually independent random variable. independent random variables. So, this is a random experiment in which uh, you are tossing a coin infinitely many times and for any nth trial you define the random variable x n with the probability it takes a value 0 with the probability 1 minus p and it takes a value 1 with the probability p and that is equivalent of appearing a head with the probability p and uh, Occurring the tail with the probability 1 minus p. Now, I am going to define a another random variable that is a partial sum of first n random variables n n x i s. So, the s n will be sum of a first n random variables therefore, the sum s n gives the number of heads appear in the first n trials. It can be observed that S n plus 1 is same as S n plus x n plus 1. Since S n is the partial sum of a first n trials outcome, so the S n plus 1 is nothing but S n plus x n plus 1. You can also observe that since S n is the sum of a first n random variables and S n plus 1 is S n plus x n plus 1 and also all the x i's are mutually independent random variables S n is uh, independent with x n plus 1. That means, here the S n plus 1 at the random variable is uh, the combination of uh, two independent random variables whereas, the S n is the till n at the trial how many heads you appeared plus whether it is a head or a tail accordingly this values is going to be 0 or 1. Therefore, if you see the sample path of S n plus 1 it will be incremented by 1 if x n plus 1 takes a value 1 or it would have been the same value earlier if this S x n plus 1 takes a value 0. And also you can observe that S n plus 1 is uh, depends on S n and only on it 
it is not a depends on S n minus 1 or S n minus 2 and so on, because it is accumulated the number of trials values over the n. Therefore, S n plus 1 is a depends on S n and only on it. The S n for different values of n, this will form a stochastic process, this will form a stochastic process and now we can come to the conclusion the probability of this is a stochastic process. The probability of S n plus 1, suppose this value is k plus 1, given that S n was k, that means the S n plus 1 value would have been 1. Therefore, the appearance of uh, the head appears in the n plus 1 at the trial and that probability is going to be p. Similarly, you can make out suppose S n plus 1 value will be k such that S n is also k, then that is possible with the n plus 1 at the trial you got the tail. Therefore, that probability is 1 minus p this is satisfied for all n. So, you can make out uh, this is satisfied for call n is greater than or equal to even I can go for n is greater than or equal to 1. Not only this similarly I can come to the conclusion the probability of S n plus 1 is equal to k given that S 1 was I 1, S 2 was I 2 and so on. S n was k that is also can be proved the probability of S n plus 1 is equal to k given that S n is equal to k. That is same as what is the probability that uh, the value was uh, same k in the subsequent trials that is possible of appearing a tail in the n plus 1 at the trial. Therefore, the, the appearance of the tail in the n plus 1 at the trial the probability is 1 minus p or I can use the notation q. That means, the probability of n plus 1 at the trial that distribution given that I know the value till the n at the trial that is same as the distribution of n plus 1 at the trial given with the only the n at the distribution not the earlier distributions and this property is called a memoryless property. The stochastic process the S n satisfies the, the memoryless property or the other word called a Marco property. The distribution of a n plus 1 given that the distribution of a 1 first random variable, second random variable, the nth random variable that is same as the conditional distribution of n plus 1 nth random variable given that with the nth random variable only and this property is called a memoryless or Marco property. The stochastic process the S n satisfying the Marco property or memoryless property is called a Marco process. the stochastic process satisfying the memoryless property or Marco property is called a Marco process. In this example, the stochastic process S n is the discrete time discrete state stochastic process. Now, I can give based on the state space and the parameter space, I can classify the Marco process or I can give the name of the Marco process in a easy way based on the state space as well as the parameter space. So, when the state space S, yes, the S yes is the state space, this is nothing but the collection of all possible values of the stochastic process. If this is of the discrete type, 
discrete type. That means, uh, the collection of uh, elements in the state space S is going to be a finite or countably infinite, then we say the state space is of the discrete type. So, whenever the stochastic process is satisfying the Markov property, then the stochastic process is called the Markov process or you can say whenever the state space is a discrete, then we can say the corresponding stochastic process we can call it as a Markov chain, whenever the state space is a discrete. Now, based on the parameter space capital T, parameter space is nothing but the possible values of key t, whether it is going to be a finite or countably infinite, then it is going to be a discrete parameter space or discrete time or it is going to be uncountably many values, then it is going to be called it as a continuous type. So, whenever the t is going to be a discrete type, then the Markov chain is going to be called it as a discrete time Markov chain. Whenever the parameter space is going to be of the continuous type, that means the possible values of uh, capital T is going to be uncountably many then we say continuous time Markov chain. So, in this example the S n, the possible values of S n is also going to the state space is going to be a discrete type and the parameter space is also going to be a discrete type. Therefore, the given example the S n is going to be the discrete time Markov chain. So, in this model we are going to study the discrete time Markov chain. The next model, model 4 model 5, we are going to discuss the continuous time Markov chain. So, in general, whenever the stochastic process satisfying the Markov property, it will be called the Markov process. So, based on the state space, the Markov process is called as a Markov chain and the based on the parameter space, it is called a discrete time Markov chain or continuous time Markov chain accordingly discrete type or continuous type.